When you're brand new to cybersecurity, choosing your first entry level certification can be really tough. In this video, we're going to make that decision as easy as possible and get you on your way to your first certification. So stay tuned. So when you're brand new to the field, it can be really overwhelming. The amount of certifications that are out there and just the general lack of information on, on kind of just direction of where beginners should go with their certification journey. And in this video, we're going to hopefully dispel some myths and we're going to provide you with the option that is the best for you to actually go on the career path that you want to go considering your background and where you kind of want to end up within the field of cybersecurity. In this video, we're going to be breaking down five entry level certifications that I believe are the most important for beginners to obtain depending on their various career paths. And for these five certifications, we're going to be breaking down the cost, the prerequisites, the difficulty, and then just kind of the job outlook and the path and the background that you kind of need for these, these certifications. So without further ado, let's get right into it. The first item on this list is not a shocker for most, and that is the Security Plus. If you've been around the industry for a while, I'm sure that you've at least heard of CompTIA, and Security Plus is CompTIA's entry-level cybersecurity certification. It really develops a strong foundation for anybody, even if they're going to be offensive or defensive within cybersecurity. If you're a beginner, Security Plus is the best place for you to start. I say this time and time again, and people always ask me this question, I always tell them Security Plus. It is is just a great baseline even if that is not the ending certification that you want to be on so you, you're gonna to want to start with security plus and you just completely build it up um, and get more specific with each certification but the security plus is a mile wide and an inch deep it will cover various topics within cybersecurity it has I believe five domains um, I have a full 35 minute guide that I'm going to put in a card up here so you can refer to that if you're really interested in going for this exam. It has all of the different details of the exam. Um, but so as far as just breaking this down with the criteria that I talked about before, the, there are no prerequisites for the Security Plus exam. I, however, I do recommend if you are totally brand new to IT and cybersecurity to consider taking the A plus and the network plus. So if you have a basic level of understanding of computers and IT, you can skip the A plus, but I would totally recommend going for the network plus. The network plus has a good amount of overlap with the security plus, so it'll make taking the security plus either easier and it will establish your a really strong foundation in networking. Networking is one of the most important areas of cybersecurity. If you have a strong foundation in networking, you can really excel in this field and get up to speed quickly. So I'm going to be touching on the Network Plus in the next certification that I'm going to be recommending, but let's cover some more of the Security Plus uh, items that you should know about. So the Security Plus is about $350. If you have a, uh, if you are a student uh, in a four-year degree program, you can get a discount that is up to 40%. Most people don't actually know about this discount, so I'm making sure to include that in this video. So if that applies to you, you can get that discount. CompTIA does a update on the Security Plus about every three years. This update consists of about a 25, historically a 25% uh, exam material change. So you can expect a 25% change and just updating the latest industry trends into the newest 601 exam. I have a, a complete blog post that I'm going to put in the description, uh, kind of doing a comparison and contrast on the Security Plus 501 versus the Security Plus 601. But let's hop on over to the Network Plus. I'm sure that some of you have said, well, why did you include the Network Plus in this list? That's not a security certification, but I think that the Network Plus is an extremely important introductory certification for you. If you have um, a less of a foundation in networking, so if you're coming from a different field, if you're coming brand new, um, just from a, a totally different industry, and you're not familiar with networking, so if you're not from IT, for example, or if you didn't have a four-year degree program, the Network Plus really is a good place to start. And you can be sure that you're not gonna be wasting your time with the Network Plus. The, the, a lot of the information is either directly applicable to the job, so you're gonna be learning really, really practical examples, hands-on experience stuff that you can be applying to your job. And then also this will set you up very well for the Security Plus certification that I mentioned previously. 
I really cannot stress the importance of networking enough. Networking really is the basis of a lot of what cybersecurity professionals do. So I would strongly recommend that when you're in the beginning, just take the time and really understand these foundational networking concepts. Some of the information that you can expect on the Network Plus would be some basic um, networking components, some information about routers, some information about switches, and then kind of how it actually does touch on security topics too. Um, so you're going to talk about the security implementations of these network components. And then you're going to be also getting introduced to some common network protocols and ports that are very important for the Security Plus exam because that is an area where a lot of people struggle. But let's talk about prerequisites. There are no prerequisites for the CompTIA Network Plus. Like I said before in the Security Plus, I kind of hinted at this, if you have no background at all and you're looking to take the certification, I would recommend getting your feet wet with the A Plus certification. Now the A Plus certification is not gonna be as related to cybersecurity, but it will teach you how CompTIA asks questions and it will really just give you a strong foundation in the IT fundamentals and even just troubleshooting um, some issues that you could be experiencing within the field of cybersecurity. But there are no uh, there are no prerequisites, no hard prerequisites for the Network Plus, so, so don't let that hold you back. But let's talk difficulty now. Comparing the Security Plus to the Network Plus, I've actually heard people um, say that the Network Plus is more difficult. Um, so it is going to obviously be, be more in-depth on the networking concepts, while the Security Plus is, is difficult in a different way. So it's a mile wide and an inch deep. If you're really, if you're brand new to a lot of these different topics, you're gonna to be learning a little bit on each one of these topics. And for some people that actually is pretty hard um, because you're, if you're not making logical links within your head uh, and you're treating these as individual components that you have to learn, that actually can be pretty difficult. So, some, so for that reason, some people find the Network Plus easier. But if that doesn't apply to you, the Network Plus is considered more difficult in the fact that it does get more technical on the networking aspects. It talks more about protocols and, and such like that. That is the last one of the CompTIA certifications that I'm gonna be talking about on this list. The next certifications that we're gonna be talking about are gonna be coming from a lot of different varied vendors. The next vendor that we're gonna be talking about is eLearn Security. And if you're not familiar with that name, that's because they're relatively new to the scene. Um, the exam specifically that I'm talking about from eLearn Security is the EJPT. So that's the eLearn Security Junior Penetration Tester. And this is an awesome certification. It doesn't quite have their industry recognition of the exams like the Pentest Plus or the CEH, but if once this finally catches on and eLearn Security begins to establish more of its reputation, especially with this exam, I think that the industry is really gonna to move towards this because the eLearn Security uh, EJPT is a 100% hands-on practical ethical hacking course. This is so much better than answering, uh, for example, like true and false questions on the CEH or if you're answering like multiple choice questions on, on tools. You're actually getting hands-on experience, so you're going through a great course that the eLearn Security team puts together and then you're, take, you're sitting for this exam, which is hands-on. As you can tell, I'm really excited about eLearn Security. Just wanted to let you know that I am in no way affiliated with them, but I think what they're doing is totally awesome because I really, really have a problem with the certifications, especially the higher level certifications that are based on true and false and, and multiple choice questions because that's just simply not representative of what you're gonna be encountering in, in the real line of work uh, in the field of cybersecurity. So props to eLearn Security and I really hope that, that HR and recruiters and managers see the importance of the eLearn security and, and they start to accept them more and maybe even post some more, some more job listings with that as a specific requirement. So now let's talk about the prerequisites of the EJPT. Again, on this list, I'm trying to keep a lot of these as beginner certifications. So this one as well has no prerequisites. So these are no hard prerequisites. eLearn Security does recommend that you have a general um, exposure to, for example, like Kali Linux, uh, Metasploit. You understand the penetration pe testing process. You understand a little bit about uh, web applications and vulnerability uh, assessments and such like that. It's not totally a hard prerequisite, like I said before. It just helps you kind of get up to speed. I would recommend kind of diving into these topics. They really won't take you that long to just get the basic level of understanding on them before actually getting into this certification. 
Number four on our list is a certification that is provided by ISC Squared. Uh, they're a very reputable organization, and if you are familiar with the name, or even if you're not familiar with the name, they also uh, provide the CISP um, or the CISSP certification that is a uh, industry-leading certification. Uh, it's more of a managerial or um, a, a higher level, so you have to experience about maybe five years or more uh, before you go for that certification. But I am including that on this list because I know that a number of you are on that career path and the, the SSCP, the System Security uh, Certified Practitioner, is a, on that path. It will really help you if you're trying to go for this CISP uh, later on. So like I kind of hinted at before, each certification provider really has their own style of the, the materials that they provide for you to study for and also the exams themselves. If you're going for the CISSP, I would totally recommend going for the SSCP as well, um, just to become familiar with the way that ISC Squared um, administrates their exams. The SSCP also, kind of like the Security Plus, covers a wide range of foundational topics that will really help you uh, set up and, and allow you a foundation that you can kind of layer on with more certifications. And similar to the other certifications on this list so far that I've mentioned, this is a pretty inexpensive certification, so it's not gonna put that much of a hurt on your pocket. Um, let's talk about the prerequisites now. So this is the only one on my list of five that has a hard prerequisite and that is that you have to have one year of experience in one of the seven domains that are on uh, the SSCP uh, exam. I'm not gonna go through all the, exam all, all the domains on this video. I'm gonna put them in the, the description as well so you can kind of just compare your experience. Um, but one thing that I have to say is if you're brand new, um, it's not really worth going for the certification just because it's not worth jumping through the hoops to, to either um, kind of apply your other experience to this certification. It's worth just going for the Security Plus. I'm really excited about number five, and that's because we are gonna be talking about a GIAC certification. If you are not familiar with GIAC certifications, in my opinion, and most people in the industry, they are the absolute industry-leading certification administrator. Um, they kind of pair with SANS, or they're one-in-one -one with SANS. So you take a SANS course, and I'm sure that a lot of you guys have heard of SANS. They release a, a load of research they have some valuable resources like the SANS uh, Internet Storm Center podcast that I listen to every single day. It's just a brief uh, information on what is going on in the cybersecurity world. But without getting off topic, let's talk about the GIAC GSEC. So the GIAC GSEC is a entry level course and certification. So the course, this corresponding SANS course for this one is the SANS 401. And just kind of to give you a introduction on SANS, so these are uh, either in person or on demand. Um, I'm actually take, personally right now taking the a SANS 599 course, which is a uh, pretty difficult uh, purple teaming course. But um, so the SANS courses they range from level 300 to level 600, kind of as you would think of for like a college course, and 600 being uh, really really hard courses. 500 being pretty difficult as well. And so these uh, SANS courses are not cheap, but they provide the most industry leading information. They're constantly being updated. And you really, unlike most other certifications, you develop a one on one uh, relationship with a lot of the SANS instructors and it kind of builds a, your network too as well. Maybe some of you are wondering, why don't we start off with the 300 level course? So we're starting off with the 401 course. The, 30, the 301 course is the, uh, the corresponding exam for the 301 course is the uh, GISF. And I think, that we, I think that your money is much better spent on the 401 course. You're gonna be getting into some more advanced topics, but while still covering a lot of the foundational material as well. While I strongly recommend the GSEC certification, I do have to say that this certification might not be worthwhile for a lot of people who are watching this video. Um, if you are brand new to the industry and you do not have, the, and you're not currently working for an employer um, that will support your certification, so this certification is going to be uh, uh, many thousands of dollars, unlike the other certifications on this list. That's kind of why I put it at the end. It has the, the, the leading information, the best information available to you. So for example, like when you sign up for this exam, when I sign up for my 
um, 599 course, I got sent eight books, a, a full online uh, week-long course and such like that. So they, they really do make it valuable for you, but for the individual, um, this is a lot harder to afford. So that's why I would say if your company um, supports certifications, I would absolutely ask them, show them the importance of the exam and, and tell them that you would like to pursue this exam. But if you are an individual supporting yourself, this might not be the option for you. Let's talk about the prerequisites of the GSEC right now. So there are no prerequisites. I would recommend uh, that you kind of just get a basic foundation. So you look up the, the objectives of the course and you kind of just look up an outline and familiarize yourself uh, with the materials before you get it into the pretty intense week-long course. So that was the five best entry-level cybersecurity certifications in my opinion. Let me know what you think about these in the comments and if I miss anything, definitely let me know. If you find a certification uh, that, that really just landed you a job and you got great information from it, definitely let me know. Um, I'm gonna put my email in the description and also feel free to comment that so everyone else can know. Thanks for sticking around and learning about these certifications with me. I will see you in the next video.